Hi everyone. Good morning. Thank you for joining us today. This week, the elementary students had the honor to hear from a family of missionaries to Uzbekistan. They've come to share their story and their heart to spread the gospel to people that have never heard of Jesus. They have asked us not to include their names in the recording, so we have bleeped them out throughout the message. Thank you for listening. Hope you enjoy. They are missionaries outside of the United States. And I really want you guys to pay attention because, you know, the heart of the gospel, the heart of the Father is that everybody would know Jesus because it is so transformational, right? Like we were singing that last part in that song, I am yours and you are mine. Like I'm never going to feel lonely because I belong to the Father. He calls me his, right? And there's people that have never heard that and it should be super transformative when you have a relationship with Jesus. Anyway, I have known this young lady since she was about three months old, and it's been super cool. She grew up with my kiddos. We did all the church things together. We did um, youth convention and trunk or treat and chili cook-off and, um, you know, all the cool things you get to do when you belong to a community of believers. And... um, I'm really excited. I just really want you to have excellent chapel behavior today because I think what they have to say is life-giving. And if you're you're having a hard time, I think what they have to say will really um, just be transformative. So can we give a big Eagles welcome to... Hi, Thank friends. You. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We'll try it again. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Good morning. I know sometimes it's hard where you're like, oh, I'm not supposed to talk. But that one, that was okay for you to say good morning. Friends, I love Miss Day. I've known her almost my whole life. And you know what's really cool? Three years ago, we were here in chapel. Was anyone here three years ago in chapel and maybe remembers us coming? It's okay if you don't remember. But we're so excited to be back with you all and to share about what we do as missionaries. So before we tell you all about what we do, um, you'll see on the picture on the screen that we have two boys. Is four years old, is two and a half years old. Anyone have a little brother or sister at home? So don't worry, we are taking them with us. They are getting on the plane with us and moving across the world with us. And actually, this is kind of cool. Our youngest, he's two and a half years old, he was born in another country. He was born in Turkey. He is still an American citizen because we are American citizens. But isn't that kind of cool that for the rest of his life he'll get to, I mean, he doesn't remember it, of course, but he'll get to tell people that he was born in Turkey. So um, I'm like Miss Day said, this is my husband, and we're going to talk to you guys about being missionaries. So we live and serve Jesus in a country called Uzbekistan. Can you say Uzbekistan? Nice job. Three years ago, we were in a neighboring country called Kyrgyzstan, but now we're joining a new team in Uzbekistan. So we're in California, over on this side. We live and serve Jesus over on this side. It's far away. It's the opposite side of the world. So when it's morning here, it's nighttime there. When it's nighttime here, it's morning over there. How long do you think it takes us to get there? A long time. 24 hours by plane. A whole day of traveling. Wow. So this area of the world is called Central Asia, and it's home to the ancient Silk Road. Have you guys heard of the Silk Road? Even history class, social studies. Cool. So go to the next slide. We have some trivia for you guys. So stand up. Stand up with me. Go ahead and stand up. You're going to play a little trivia game. And it's easy. If you guess correctly, you stay standing. (laughs) If you get it wrong, you sit down. Okay. So the first question is, Kumas, say Kumas. (laughs) Kumas. <laughs> is the national drink of Kyrgyzstan, and it is A, mountain tea with wild honey, or B, 
Mare's milk, which is a female horse. Mare's milk fermented in a goat skin. Okay, so real quickly, you're going to put your finger on your nose if you think it's A. You're going to put your finger on your ear if you think it's B. And we'll do that for the next four questions. So go ahead and vote now. A on your nose or B on your ear. And All be, right. Be honest. All right, the answer is... B. B. If you All got right. it correct, stay standing. If you didn't get it right, be honest and sit down. You can still play if you're sitting down, okay? Yes. All right, next question. All right, traditionally, what is the day before an Uzbek wedding called? Is it Ooh. A, carrot cutting day, or B, goat fetching day? Finger Remember. on your nose for A, finger on your ear for B. I see kind of half and half. All Make right. a choice. The correct and answer is carrot cutting oh. day. All we right, lost a lot Ooh, of that people. got a lot of people out. <laughs> so. <laughs> Tell them why they cut carrots before a wedding. So the day before an Uzbek wedding, it's not rehearsal day, it's not whatever, it's carrot cutting day because the national dish of, of Uzbekistan is this rice dish and they chop up a whole bunch of carrots to go in that dish. They get their whole family together and they cut carrots all day. That's why it's called carrot cutting day. All right, third <laughs> question. We got two more. Which fruit originated in Central Asia? our part of the world, where we live. Is it A, the apple, or B, the peach? Okay. So, finger on your nose for A, finger on your ear for B, choose in one, two, three, what's the answer? The apple. apple. Ooh, we lost more people. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, we've got a couple friends, couple friends on this ooh, side that ooh. are still so in the game. To, okay, okay, next question. This is exciting. So, okay, listen, listen. Traditionally, this game of polo, it's played on horseback all across Central Asia, uses a what instead of a ball? A boot of the Elige Ilder, or B, a body of a headless goat? A for finger on your nose, B for on your ear. Is it a boot or is it all a right. headless goat? Vote now, vote now. All right, what's the answer? The body of a headless oh! goat. Who's left standing? <laughs> All right, if one of your friends from your class got all four questions right today at recess, go up and give them a big high five. You, you guys know more down. about Central Asia than your friends. Congratulations, guys. <laughs> all right, friends, I want you to roll your shoulders back. I want you to point your knees towards the front. Those are some fun facts about where we live. But now we want to talk to you. What is a missionary? What does a missionary do? A missionary is someone who goes to another place, maybe another country or culture, and they have to do a couple things before they're able to tell people about Jesus. One of those first things we do is we learn a new language because we can't go over there and tell them in English about God because not everyone speaks English. So we take time to learn their language and their culture so that we can tell them about God in a way that makes sense to them. We find a new apartment or a house, we live in a different place, and we spend the rest of our lives telling people about God. So that's what a missionary is. The next question, I'm gonna answer and feel free to shout it out, okay? Who can be a missionary? Hey, nice wow, job. you guys got it. <laughs> Anybody can be a missionary. You guys can be a missionary to your friends, grandmas, parents, your pastor, the electrician, anybody can be a missionary. The most important quality of being a missionary is that you are willing to go wherever God is calling you to serve mm -hmm. and that you have a heart and a passion to see people know and learn about Jesus. Mm -hmm. That is what a missionary is, and anybody can be a missionary. Mm -hmm. How many of you are in the fifth grade? Any fifth graders there? <gasps> hey. That's a fifth graders up here. So God called me when I was in the fifth grade. I was your guys' age. I want you to know this. You are never too young. You're never too young to hear from God. Mm -hmm. So just know that. You're never too young, and you're never too old to hear from God. So God called when he was in the fifth grade. God called me when I was in college. So I was much older. I knew what I was going to do with my life. I had a plan. I was getting a degree in college. And God interrupted my life and said, this is what I have for you. So we like to say that if you have an open heart, 
if you long to serve Jesus and you're just open and ready to wherever God will take you, God will do amazing things with you because he's a good father and he loves to work through his people, You which did is get awesome. a degree, though. You made it sound like you dropped out of college. Oh, sorry. I did finish my college <laughs> education. <laughs> All right. So who were some missionaries in the Bible? So first chapel with the lower grades, they did this so well. So I'm, I'm expecting you guys... We're going to do well with this too. So there are two sections of the Bible. The first section of the Bible is called the Old Testament. And the second section of the Bible is called the... Nice job. Nice job, guys. So in the Old Testament, God led the nation of Israel out of Egypt, out of slavery. He takes them into the promised land. And you know what that... You know what Israel's job was as a people? Their job was to be a light to the nations. It was actually God's heart from the very beginning that Israel would be used to tell everyone around them about God, our creator, and our king. Now, they didn't always do it perfectly, but that was always God's design, was that Israel would live as if they were missionaries, showing God's light and love to all the nations around them. So, We see God's missional heart for people and for countries and for lost people all throughout the Old Testament. Now, when you go into the New Testament, there's this guy named the Apostle Paul. Who's heard of the Apostle Paul before? Yeah, he's pretty awesome. He wrote like most of the New Testament books. The Apostle Paul was so radically changed by Jesus. Miss Day talked about this earlier. Like, he was transformed Every part of his life was changed because he met Jesus. He thought, I have to do something about this. I have to tell everyone about it. And he even writes in scripture that I can't just stay here with this one church that's doing really, really well, but I have to go to the next place and the next place and the next place. I have to keep going to new places until everyone's heard about Jesus. So the apostle Paul was kind of like the first like modern missionary where he went to all these different places telling people about Jesus. So we see all throughout the Bible that God has a heart for those people who have never heard before. So I'm going to ask you some more questions, but instead of using our voices, we're going to raise our hands for these, okay? So why do we still need missionaries? So raise your hand if you've heard about Jesus. All right, put your hands back down. Raise your hand if you have a Bible in your home. All right, put your hand back down. Raise your hand if you have two Bibles in your home. All right, put your hands back down. Raise your hand if you have three or more Bibles in your home. All right, put your hands back down. Raise your hand if you guys go to church. All right, you can put your hands back down. We still need missionaries because children, just like you in Uzbekistan, they don't have any Bibles. They haven't had anyone tell them about Jesus. And even if they did hear about Jesus, there are no churches for them to just go to. There's no kids' church to go, to be a part of. It just doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. And so there are parts of this world that people have never heard about Jesus. Or if they had, they can't share it openly. Or they can't distribute Bibles openly because the government is against them. And So we go, and especially we go to Uzbekistan because they're not allowed to openly be Christians there. So that is why we go. That is why we still need missionaries to go to these places where they have just no access to Bibles, to churches, for anyone to tell them about Jesus. And friends, for Uzbeks in Uzbekistan, so remember that country on the other part of the world, here's the stat. For every 10,000 Uzbeks, there's only one Christian. So on this screen up there, it's really hard to see because they're so small, but there are 10,000 little emoji people on the screen. If you go to the next slide, you'll, you'll find that one Christian in the sea of 10,000 people. So I want you to close your eyes. I want you to picture, let's picture the Angel Stadium. Okay, it's a big stadium. Maybe you've been there before and you've seen the fireworks or you've seen a baseball game. In that stadium, there are 40,000 seats. Okay, I looked it up on Google. So picture every single seat full. Every seat is filled with an Uzbek. Okay, there's 40,000 Uzbeks in that stadium. Now I want you to open your eyes and I'm showing you on my hand how many Christians there would be in that stadium. Four. Four Christians out of the 40,000 that sit in that stadium. That's just a visual for you to see 
that even if an Uzbek wanted to know about God, even if they wanted to hear about Jesus, you know, people around the world are having dreams about God. Isn't that cool? Muslims are having dreams and visions where Jesus appears to them and says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And then they wake up and they don't have anyone to ask questions of. They don't have anyone to talk to or for anyone to give them a Bible. So even if someone wanted to know about Jesus, they just don't have access to the gospel. So we've been talking about us. We've been talking about what missionaries do. But I want to talk to you as we end chapel today about what you can do. So we're going to roll our shoulders back and shake off any squirminess. I want you to take your hands and I want you to have them open like this. Now you can have them up or you can have them kind of on your knees sitting down, but I want your palms to be open. Friends, this is an excellent posture to use when we pray because we're just telling God, I'm open and ready. Whatever you want to speak to me, whatever you want to say. But this is also a great reminder for us today about what God may be asking us to do. So with our open hands, the first thing I want to challenge you to do, and this is something you can do as a fourth, fifth, sixth grader, you can pray. I want to challenge you to pray for people who have never heard of Jesus before. Challenge you to pray for missionaries and for countries in the world that just don't have access to the gospel. Second thing you can do is that you can give sacrificially some of your money to go to missions work. You can give that to your parents, and then they can give it to a missionary. Friends, we have a family in Missouri. We went to church with them. They have three kids. Now the kids are probably like 14, 11, and 9. But three years ago, when we went off as missionaries, this family committed to give us $28 a month. $20 the parents committed, $5 the oldest kid committed, $2 the next kid, and $1 the seven-year-old at that time. And every month, we get $28 a month from that family. Isn't that so cool that this whole family committed to giving to us? So open hands. God, how do you want me to use my money? How could I earn money to give to the church or to give to missions? And then the third thing is ask. God, are you calling me to be a missionary? Are you calling me to tell people about Jesus? Right? So that's, that's one thing that we can do with open hands. The next thing is I want you to look at your shoes. Some of you wore um, sneakers today. You have laces or Velcro or maybe someone's still wearing sandals because it's still kind of warm is wearing sandals because he always wears sandals. Okay, so you're looking at your shoes. And I want you to picture every single morning when you put your shoes on, I want you to ask God, God, where are you taking me today? Now, of course, you're going to go to school. You're going to go home. You're going to do your clubs and activities. But God, who can I walk to to tell them about Jesus? Who can I talk to, to share the hope I have in Jesus? And secondly, who could I invite to church with me or a school program or somewhere where someone else who doesn't know God can come and learn about God? So you've got kind of two um, responses today, open hands and feet ready to live like a missionary. Go ahead and bow your heads with me. We're going to pray as we end our chapel service And I see some of you just already have your open hands as you're praying. I love that. Jesus, we are so grateful that we know about you. Maybe not everyone in this room has made the choice to follow you, but we're so grateful we have heard about who you are, your love for us, how you died and rose again so that we could live with you forever. Not every kid, not every family, not every person in this world has heard about you, Jesus, and that breaks our hearts. And so, God, we just want to say we'll do whatever you want us to do. We will live our lives so unashamedly um, followers as, as followers of you so that other people can know about you. 
Jesus, I thank you for my friends in this room, and I know that you have plans and purposes for them that were destined before they were even born. So I pray a blessing over them and their families and their classrooms and their teachers, and I pray, Jesus, that you would be glorified in their lives. We ask this in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. All right, we're going to stay seated because we're going to pray over the girls because they're doing something super sacrificial, and... Um, who's two and who's four, right? Some of you get upset if you're like not in class with your best friend. And I get it, it's hard, but we make friends. But they're taking their whole family, like leaving your parents. That wrecks me, because you know, I love being a Gigi. Your parents and these young men, young men, are going to live in a country where nobody even speaks the same language that they do. And they talked about giving money to missionaries, and so when you're a missionary, that's your full-time job, so you don't have a job to earn money. So there's people that support them so that they can go and spread the gospel. So we're going to pray. You've got like 90% of your support. We're going to pray that you get 20% more because I want abundance for you guys. Super emotional. Just so proud of you. Um, I, like, I feel like a proud mom but you guys are doing hard things for the kingdom. I tell people all the time, I have the most incredible students at our school, and I know, I know you have boys and girls and their families that are gonna be praying for you and your boys. And um, I can't wait till you come back. When do you get to come back and earn money again? Yes, I'll still be here. I'm retiring in 10 years, so we got two more rounds, right? And the boys will be like, they can come and hang out in the class, bring them next time. So boys and girls, I'm just going to pray for them. If you want to stretch out a hand and pray or just close your eyes, but let's just ask God to continue to bless this family. Mm, Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just thank you for the Lord. We thank you for their yeses. It does take courage. I know when God calls us, like we know in our hearts and our minds that he goes before us, but God, it takes courage. Lord, they're going to a place where um, healthcare isn't always there, and we've seen you provide in that, Lord God, and I just ask for a hedge of protection around this family, but Lord, I pray for community. I pray for community, for Lord God, that you go before them and there's a community waiting for them. Lord, I just pray that when they start sharing the gospel, they will meet people that say, oh, I've been waiting so long to hear this. God, I pray for open hearts. I pray for people to come to a saving knowledge of your son, Jesus, Lord. It is not, it is not a gift that we should hoard, Lord, but we should share it with everybody. Lord, I pray for financial provision. They are so close. They have three months and they need 10% more, but God, you're so big, and you have blown me away in so many ways. I'm asking for 20%. I'm asking for an abundance of money to come in in this next three months for this family. Lord, I just pray that you would continue to love them. Lord, I pray that you would be with their families as they say goodbye to them, because I know that's so hard. And Lord, I just pray for the students in this room that you might be tugging on their heart, saying, mm, this is what I have for you someday. God, we just, we love the you love them more. Bless their ministry, Lord God. Keep them safe. And I just can't wait to um, get those newsletters and hear how things are going. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. This episode has been a production of the Capistrano Valley Christian Schools Podcast Network. Capistrano Valley Christian Schools is a Christian JK-12 school in San Juan Capistrano, California. Be sure to check out, subscribe to, and leave a review of this show and the other shows on our network on your podcast player of choice. Doing so supports the school community in a multitude of ways. For more information about the CVCS Podcast Network or any of our other shows, check out cvcs.org or email podcasts at cvcs.org. On behalf of the whole network, this is Mr. Jasper saying thank you again for listening and stay tuned for more.